I was just absolutely enchanted when I saw this because I was just like, hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Jessie Sage and today we have another This Old Thing episode. So on today's episode, I wanna talk about something that I've been promising to talk about for a while and that is to address the rumor that Anna Nicole Smith lived in Marilyn Monroe's house. So a lot of you guys commented requesting more about this on the video I did about Marilyn Monroe's house and how much it sold for. So I'm really, really glad to see that there is interest in this subject. I've sort of been uncovering like more and more layers as I've, my curiosity was piqued about this. I've been collecting more and more. So I think now it's the perfect time to do it. And also because last week, um, I just did an episode for you guys about the connection between Britney Spears and Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> How can I not say her name when I talk about her all the time? I just call her Marilyn. Um, Marilyn Monroe, especially the Free Britney movement and in relation to that, and I read Marilyn Monroe's letter from a psych ward. So if you wanna check that out, I will also put that in the info box for you. Um, so a lot of that video had to do with the media and how much they can lie and how damaging that can be. So I thought that that was kind of a good segue into this one because it's Marilyn and um, this also has to do with the media. Let's get started. So I'm just gonna give a super quick rundown of who Anna Nicole Smith was for those of you guys who don't know. Anna Nicole was a model in the 90s and she had a very unique journey for a lot of different reasons, but actually her journey was very sim similar to Marilyn's. So she started out basically dirt poor in a town called Mejia, Texas. And she ended up modeling for Playboy. And through those shots, then ended up becoming a model for Guess Jeans and transitioning over into the fashion world from Playboy. So even though thankfully body standards are a lot different now um, and still need to get a lot better, in the 90s, there was absolutely no way that a Playboy model was ever going to become a fashion model that was just seen as never going to happen because they were too curvy and that just wasn't the look that fashion modeling world was going for. And they kind of like, you know, they did their thing. They like turned their nose up at it or whatever. So it was so cool when Anna Nicole became a model for guests because she was freaking stunning and she just had the face of an old film star. I mean, her pictures, her guest pictures are just captivating. Like they look like a scene from a movie and you just wanna know like, who is that girl? And so it was just so cool because she was just this country girl. She was so much bigger than everyone else. Not only was she, um, I mean, she wasn't like overweight. She was just herself and she did fluctuate a lot. So um, I'm just talking about like when she, was a Playboy model and when she first became a guest model. Um, she's also just really, really tall and like more big boned. Like if you see her in pictures around other people, she's just a big person. And so it was just so cool to have this person who was just so different um, as the face of all of these things, but also it just immediately clicked. Like you could never question like, oh, well she's, she shouldn't be a model. She's not like us cause she's not good enough or whatever. It was just like, yeah, she's freaking gorgeous. What are you gonna do about it basically? So that's sort of her cultural context. So before she worked for Playboy, she worked as a dancer at a club called Gigi's, I think it was. And that was in Texas. That was where she met her future husband, J. Howard Marshall. So a huge part of the sort of saga of Anna Nicole and the public perception of her is as a gold digger. J. Howard Marshall was a billionaire. He was extremely old and he went into Gigi's in his wheelchair. So a lot of the media sort of portrayed her as tricking this poor senile old man into marrying her. Um, and I just wanna point out that she, he asked her to marry him before she did Playboy, before she did Guest, became a model and all that. He met her and he was just like, you'll never work again, just please marry me. And she said, no, I have to make something of myself. I have to do my dreams. So it wasn't like she like married this guy and then she became famous. She actually became famous and then she married him. So that 
also caused a me media stir. After he died, she would be fighting for his millions for the rest of her life in and out of court. And a lot of that is connected to why she had so much trouble in her life because she was seen as having money even though she never was awarded the money or never was given the money. Um, people thought she had it, so there were just leeches all over her. So Anna Nicole actually had a special connection to Marilyn Monroe. Um, not only did she look like her, she also loved her. Um, so it wasn't a coincidence that she was always styled like her. She herself encouraged that um, connection because ever since she was a kid, she had just loved her. And they had a lot of similarities in their lives. They both grew up, even though they both had moms, they were sort of orphaned by their moms due to different circumstances and they lived with a lot of different people throughout their lives so that is a very so that's a really strong similarity that made her feel really connected to her and she was known on her trips to always have tapes of marilyn with her and i just think that's so cute you even travel with uh marilyn monroe videos is that true i read that right mm -hmm. i got four of them with me now as a matter of fact do you keep watching the same ones all over again you to see more about Anna herself talking specifically about Marilyn I will link a video in the info box below for you um, it's got a bunch of clips it's sort of concise it's like five minutes a lot of people sort of get bent out of shape because they think that Anna was trying to like be Marilyn or she was just copying her and like that she didn't have respect for her and there's always debates even to this day you can go on Instagram and if someone posts a side-by-side -side of them the likeness is obvious and someone below will say, oh, well, Anna Nicole couldn't hold a candle to Marilyn. And so I just wanted to point out something that I noticed about her and what really, I think when I saw this clip, I had so much more respect for her. And I knew that she was never trying to like steal Marilyn's thing. Anna was a rare celebrity who actually loved paparazzi and she would hang out with them and pretty much treated them as a photo shoot. <laughs> so there is so much cool footage of her talking to them and vamping it up for the camera. So in this clip, one of the paparazzi says that she's better than Marilyn. And she actually stops them and says, mm-mm. I love you all. Hold it, hold it. You're like Marilyn, only better. <laughs> Not Never be Mar better. Than Never Marilyn. better than Marilyn. Never better. So as I said in my video about Marilyn's house, I had seen an interview of Anna Nicole where she had just sort of mentioned in passing that she had lived in Marilyn Monroe's house. And it was just like a side comment while telling a, a story about something else. And I was just like, what? This is so cool because I'm obsessed with Marilyn Monroe's house and it's kind of cool seeing that someone who you think of as famous and so you know when you're up there in Hollywood yourself you would think that she wouldn't be like fangirling out but she is and she's like kind of like the world's biggest Marilyn fan and the world's biggest nerd about it um which I love um and she actually took it to the extreme where she made a whole career basically off of loving Marilyn and her ability to sort of like capture that energy and also she even made it happen where she lived in her house. So I thought it was really cool that everyone always talks about the connections between them, the bad things in their lives and the good, but that there was that direct physical connection that she actually lived in her house and she like acknowledged that connection and wanted that so much that she would rent her house um, was just so cool to me. So I wanted to know more and I just really couldn't find anything. And so I started finding these little snippets. It was like this weird wild goose chase where I would find a comment in a forum that was a million years old and then I would find one response and that would be it and that's all I could find out. Um, or I would find like one picture of her in a house that kind of looks like Marilyn's but she could have just been visiting or it could have just not been the house. So I was on this wild goose chase. And when I tried to find the interview where Anna Nicole had said that, I couldn't even find that. And 
I couldn't remember what it was called or what it was from. I thought it was E.T. probably, but I just couldn't find it. And I will admit that Anna Nicole's story, and perhaps what makes it more fascinating, is that it is very hard to track because it's a lot like one of the old Hollywood stars where the person reinvented themselves, they changed their name, they came from a really, really bad place, and they tended to exaggerate things or not reveal complete other things. So um, from the beginning, she contributed to making her legend a sort of larger than life thing. And I get that when you grow up in the South and you have a lot of crazy family, sometimes it just doesn't really make sense to explain it all to people. Um, so yeah, that's something that makes it even harder um, to figure out the truth. I just couldn't find it. And then finally, somehow, I don't even know, my brain just clicked. I found it under this video. I think it's called like, Anna Nicole's assistant, Kimmy, speaks out. And that was the title of it. And then that clip was like in the second half of the interview. So I. I don't even know how I ever found that, but I like saved it as soon as I found it. Um, and I was like, okay, so here she is. She's talking about living in the house and how Marilyn's ghost would scare her son, Daniel. This is not one of my favorite clips of her because she seems to be having a really hard time in the interview and her words are sort of slurred. And to me, I felt like she was telling a story that was probably true to her. But, but that the way she was talking and explaining it, because it seems like she was pretty drugged up in the interview, um, just made her seem kind of crazy. I lived in her home. I feel that we are bonded. Marilyn's bedroom, her kitchen, her pool. This was her final home. In 2004, Anna told us her devotion to her idol brought her to live in the very house where Marilyn slipped into a drug-induced coma and died in 1962. Set in the quiet neighborhood of Brentwood, Anna and her young son Daniel felt at times that Marilyn still had a hold on the place. Her spirits were there. My son hated it because things would move around and he just hated it, but I loved it. Anna felt that Marilyn's spirit hovered around her, and she says that during one photo shoot where she was made up to look like the late sex symbol, Marilyn showed her displeasure by destroying one image. And there was one picture that was all like white, like a ghost. Once I refound the interview and I realized, okay, this is true, I have to find this. Um, I became more determined. After I saved that interview and I knew that I could go back and find it exactly where I needed, I just sort of started collecting info. So there is a really cool account called Anna Nicole Daily on Instagram. And this account has so much info about Anna and I don't know how they get it. <laughs> I'm just like, wow how long have you been collecting these photos? How how do you have this info? Like, they know like who took the pictures, where she was when she went on vacation, all these things. So shout out to at Anna Nicole Daily. I love you so much. Um, such a good account to follow if you guys love Anna Nicole because not only do they share pictures, but also a lot of unique info and unique photos. And also they have some videos on YouTube too. I'll actually link them below, I forgot, because um, I always watch them on Instagram. Um, but they're really like beautiful, like really well edited videos of Anna. So I just looked back through my DMs with Anna Nicole Daly and I realized that they were the ones that actually helped me figure out which video Anna was talking about Marilyn's ghost in. So they actually sent me that link that said um, Anna Nicole's silent and Nicole's assistance breaks her silence. So that is what actually set me on the trail. So the connection that it has to my video last week about Brittany and Marilyn and the media is this article that I actually found when I was researching about Marilyn's house. And it's a variety article about her house. So I'm just gonna read to you really quick. And remember that variety is sort of the entertainment world publication, so it's very well respected. 
Um, okay, so I'm just gonna quickly read you this part that's relevant. So this article is called Marilyn Monroe Died Here by Mark David, July 14th, 2010. So I'm just gonna read you the relevant paragraph. There are multiple rumors and reports floating around the interweb, including on the Movieland directory, that at some point the property was leased to the Marilyn Monroe obsessed model Anna Nicole Smith, a more trashy and modern day version of Miss Monroe who met her own tawdry, drug-related end in a South Florida motel room in February of 2007. However, your mama is deeply suspicious about that rumor. Maybe she did, but probably she didn't, and if she did, we're quite certain it would have had to have been before the current owners bought the place. Okay. Thank you, Mark. So I thought that this article and how easily it brushed off Anna Nicole saying that she had lived there as a lie by just those little adjectives and adverbs that they sprinkle in there during 2010 and the years before that the way that they had portrayed Anna was um un it was unprecedented the way like the vitriol that they unleashed on her. It was just like everyone who had thought like, how dare you? All those people that had just wanted to tear her down, like they just got their chance and they like went for it. So anyway, that's why I wanted to do this article because a lot of those sort of threads that people throw around of like, you know, those things that they do to discredit people in articles, it's really, really hard to trace and hard to nail down exactly what the lie is, but for this one, I just knew that I could figure it out. So, and then there's one comment from February 18th, 2011, that says, Anna Nicole Smith did live at Fifth Helena, Marilyn's house, for a few months in the mid 90s. She rented the property. There are a series of photographs of her in the house and taped interviews of her talking about her time there. So thanks Anonymous for commenting that. Someone else said on July 20th, 2010, Anna Nicole Smith did not live in the house. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, burst your bubble. Um, July 15th, 2010, someone said, not one of my prouder moments, but I do know that Anna Nicole Smith did live in this house. J. Howard Marshall rented it for her before they got married and after her guest jeans ad. So it was around this time that I started my research for my video about the sale of Marilyn's house. And that was when I found this Variety article. So when I read that, it just got me all riled up and also made me realize that there are a lot of people that actually don't know about this and also might think it's really cool. So that was when I included my question in my video, asking you guys if you would want to know more about it. And a lot of you guys said yes. I had a ton of great pictures and the interview of Anna talking about living in the house but I just wanted something more, so I just kept looking. So that was when I found gold on YouTube. I found this video that was 44 minutes long. It is a Swedish journalist named Stina Dabrowski interviewing Anna when she lived in Marilyn's house. So it is 44 minutes in all its glory. It starts, you can even see the outside of the house, you can if you look at pictures of Marilyn's house, you can identify exactly where Anna was sitting for the interview. And I was just absolutely enchanted when I saw this because I was just like, it's like someone read my mind and then went back in time and like made the exact video I needed. So yeah, I would totally put the entire interview in here, but my video would be way over an hour. So I'm just going to put the best clip for you guys so you can see it live in living color and then i will put the link to the entire video down below hi i'm anna nicole smith and watch me in stina's program hi anna nicole hi when you were little and lived in mahaya do you remember what kind of dreams did you have at the time my dreams um well i always wanted to be a model i wanted to be an actress i wanted to be in the movies but um, did you have any inspiration in the near neighborhoods, so to speak? 
There was no inspiration because we had nothing, nothing in my hair. We didn't have a bowling alley. We didn't have agencies. We didn't have anything. What did um, you do there then? Well, what we did is, um, there, it was called the drag. And you go up and down the street and you drink beer <laughs> <laughs> and you talk to people and hang out the window, hello, mm -hmm. and things like that. That was it. That's all that um, we had to do, so. When did you start loving Marilyn Monroe? Gosh, since I was really small. I, I can't even remember. I was really young. Why? What, what uh, made you love her so much? I don't know. We just connect somehow. We have this special bond. It's just like, I don't know, I used to wish she was my mom. <laughs> yeah? Um, I don't know. It's just... You kind of identified with her? Uh-huh. And just like I want to carry on her work, you know? Do what she didn't finish. In what way do you think that you are alike? Well, uh, a lot of our past lives are, you know, growing up and we're all pretty much the same. And um, about the boyfriend situation. <laughs> what do you mean with boyfriend situation? <laughs> she, always got, she always was miserable with them and that's me too. And uh, I just haven't found the right man yet. She seemed not to be a very happy person. She didn't seem very happy. Are you happy? Sometimes, most of the time. Mm -hmm. So in that way you're not alike, you mean? Sometimes I get depressed, sure, mm -hmm. like everyone else. Uh -huh. But uh, she gives me inspiration. I mean, I have her all in my room. When I get depressed, I go and I look at her pictures and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it. I'm going to do it for you. So. so in a way, you want to become the new Marilyn Monroe? Of the 90s? Maybe not the new Marilyn Monroe, but just the new me, the new Anna Nicole. Um, but in a sense, you know, they compare us so much, and I love to be compared with her. And um, not Marilyn Monroe, but Anna Nicole. But, you know, I want to be the sex symbol. I want to be what she was. Uh, I want to do the movie she did. I want to sing. I want to dance. Uh, I want to do all that. Why? Because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I want to do that. I would love to do movies, re, re shoot her movies. That would be a fantasy come true for me, is to reshoot her movies and sing and dance. And can you sing too? Um, I can sing Marilyn Monroe songs. <laughs> can you sing a little? <laughs> no. Oh, please. Just one. No, 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 no. no. No, I, I couldn't. <laughs> oh, I'll make you sing that. I couldn't, I, I couldn't. That one, I want to be loved by you. I couldn't sing. Oh, <laughs> sure. No, I can't. <laughs> we take that later, okay? Why do you live in this house? Because um, it's always been a dream of mine to be here. Um, I never thought I would get to live here. <laughs> Why in this house? What's special with this house? Because this is Marilyn Monroe's house, and this is where she died, and I just, I don't know, I just wanted to always be here. I just felt I had to come here, and now I'm here, and it's, it's great. And how, how is it to live here, in the house where she lived? It's great. I love it. It's wonderful. Um, you get so many vibes, and I have so many pictures of hers, and she just looks at me, and it's like she's telling me, go on with my work, you know? And uh, it's great. It, it, she really gives me inspiration. So you can really feel her spirit? I can feel her. So what kind of spirit does she have? A very nice one. A very uh, scared, sweet one. Why do you think she was so unhappy? I think she was so unhappy. The men in her life, um, the career, um, it's very hard. It's very hard out there. and. Uh, she was drinking a lot, and, uh, but that was due to her men problems. I think if she would have had a good man, um, things would have been a lot better, and, and she would have never made the mistakes she did. It is so cool, and Anna is so young, and she just did her guest campaign, um, J. Howard Marshall did rent the house for her, according to all the reports that I've read. Um, 
you know, she's fresh to LA off of a guest campaign just becoming this huge model and she has dreams of becoming a movie star as she calls being an actor, which I think is so quaint and adorable. It's just such a cool time to be able to actually see and just feel that like electricity of what it must have been like to want to be like Marilyn and to feel like it's actually working. <laughs> like you are being discovered, you're doing shoots, you're making money, you're being made up to look just like her and you're able to rent her house. Like that is crazy. It's just crazy. And the fact that this was made all before YouTube and all of that, I'm just so grateful because I don't even know what channel this came out on. It's so weird. I found, um, like no one even know, knew that she did this interview. Um, I found a photo of, it looks like Stina and Anna are actually sitting on Anna's bed um, from what I can see in the photo. And it looks like it was probably taken like right before the interview or something because Anna's hair is exactly the same, but she's wearing like a guest t-shirt. So maybe it was while she was getting ready or maybe right after. And it said, um, Anna Nicole's girlfriend and her pose on her bed. And it's just so funny because like, I mean, unless there's more info on that, which would be super interesting. Um, but Stina was not her girlfriend. She was just some interviewer lady that came there and the people just think that that photo is true. So um, yeah, if anybody knows anything more about Stina Dabrowski, if you ever like, if I'm saying it completely wrong, sorry about that. If you know what channel she was on or like what her interviews were, like why did she interview her for 44 minutes and where was this gonna be? One more thing. I love how Stina, I just call her Stina now. Um, we're like BFFs. Um, I just love how she interviews her. She is very intelligent and she's not like the American media. Like she doesn't let Anna get off the hook of questions, but she also isn't cruel and she's very, She's just very curious. She actually asked her a lot of questions about Marilyn. Um, and yeah, I just, I thought this was a really, really well done interview. So that's pretty much it for this video. I can always just ramble on for a million hours. I probably should do a podcast because it's just so much easier for me. But I really hope that you guys like that. For all of you that did comment on my video and encourage me to do this, I really appreciate it because I just knew that eventually I had to do it because I had promised you guys that I would and that there were still people that wanted to know about that was really, really cool. Thank you. And I just wanted to close with this quote from Anna. She said, I wanna be remembered as just someone sweet that came to Hollywood saying, follow your dreams. The end. I love you guys for watching and for caring about all these old things. <laughs> so um, I'll talk to you next time. Oh, speaking of which, check out my website if you've watched this long. Probably already clicked out, but check out my website. Luca, it's okay. It's okay, Luca. Check out my website, thisoldthing.com, and I'll put any more info and like screenshots and stuff from this um, all there. So thanks, guys. Bye.